powered by passion. It's National Auto Care's Fixed Ops 5 with your host, National Fixed Operations Training Manager, Corey Smith. Welcome to Fixed Ops 5. I'm your host, Corey Smith. Today, I'm being joined by Corey Parker, Fixed Operations Director for Four Dealership Group. Before we get into this episode, Corey, give me a little elevator version about your career. What got you to this point in your life? Well, Mr. Corey, I uh, started out, actually, I went to East Carolina University to be a uh, music education teacher. Oh, okay. Um, began as a music education teacher, and uh, on the, like most teachers have to do these days, uh, I was basically waiting tables uh, during the, you know, summer seasons, and uh, uh, owner by the uh, by a company here in Jacksonville, a big dealership, uh, was out to lunch and decided that um, he would offer me a job as a service advisor. Um, I took his offer, and from there, I um, basically worked my way up, you know, to service manager, to service director, and now to a fixed operations director. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that, sir. And, and to go from, you know, a totally different spectrum with music, which everyone loves, and someone found your, you know, you at you waiting tables and saw you had some potential, right? And offered you this and a totally different career path. That's, that's great. Great story. So, Corey, you're running four different locations. Just to give the audience some backstory, how many of those are manufactured dealerships that you're running right now? Well, we have two. Um, they're under uh, Mitsubishi. Yeah. Uh, one in Morro Beach, North Car- or South Carolina, and one in uh, Jacksonville, North Carolina. Okay. The other two are actually independent shops and function okay. as. Okay, so you have two factories and two um, independent shops. So the culture is is different. Is that correct in saying that? Yeah, absolutely. It is quite vast in difference. Okay. So how do you get your team trained up and, and also keep with the same core values and culture that the company has? Well, you know, that's a good question. So, you know, when it comes to training the team, I actually go the same direction with both. Um, usually you want to start out with your front, front of the house, because no matter what, whether it's an independent shop, or whether it's, you know, manufacturer with any kind of manufacturer, call it Mitsubishi, DMC, so forth, you're always going to be looking forward to your advisors. Your service advisors are the, they are the face, they are everything. They're the, who your customers are coming to see. Um, They're the ones who are seeing the work come in, bringing the work in. So you really want to start from the front of the house and basically make sure that your customer base is obviously taken care of and then kind of work, you know, around them. Okay. So your goal is to basically get them in a room and, and no matter if they're with the factory of Mitsubishi or your um, independent shop, you're teaching them, hey, this is what our company is all about, our mission statement, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And the mission statements are going to be always very, very close when it comes to that. Um, and, and training is very, very close. So then you have the factory that comes in and does some training. Now, what kind of training do you give your independent dealerships? So with the independent, that becomes a little bit more stringent upon, um, you know, the folks that you either bring in for training or the folks that, you know, you hire in the business to do training. Um, Because, you know, with your manufacturers, you've got a lot of focus on the main manufacturer that, you know, obviously you're running under their name. Mm -hmm. Uh, With an independent, you're servicing all types of vehicles. Yeah. Uh, I mean, from, you know, even, even some things that you, you, you haven't even seen in years. So you have to be very, very more informative with them. You know, not taken away from the dealership where there are a lot of dealerships as we also like, you know, um, you know, we want to take, we have to take care of internal vehicles for UCIs. Those are going to be, you know, other brands other than Mitsubishi. So, you know, really you kind of have to train the service advisors a little bit more stringent on the independent because they're seeing a lot more of it than you are on the dealership where they're seeing a more majority of the manufacturer that you're running. Right. Okay. So are there different KPIs 
for an independent versus the factory? Um, I would say so. Um, a lot of the times, and it really depends on region. I mean, you know, I've, I've only usually function on the East Coast. Okay. Um, so, you know, how they would do in the Midwest or the West Coast, um, you know, could really differentiate your factors. Uh, it also differentiates in the type of, you know, community that you're in. You know, are you in a, you know, really high, um, I would say more higher income community than you would be in a community, you know, in a very small town, which could possibly in some ways, you know, cater to a, a lower income community. Right. So the advisor from, from the independent side really needs to know a lot about almost every vehicle that's made because they don't know what's coming in that day. Right. Correct. Absolutely. In the independent shop, it is literally one of those things where, you know, you, a lot of independent shops have such a high volume uh, and they run a higher volume, usually, you know, on basis um, than most dealerships do. So a lot of independents, for example, a lot of independents that I've managed, they don't do as much of an appointment schedule like your, your dealership and your manufacturers do. So really you kind of have to be on your toes where in the dealership, a lot of dealerships follow a homework plan. You know, they're preparing for the customers and the appointments the next day where the independents are there, they're walking through the door, they've got their head in the game and they're taking whatever comes out. Yeah. And so let me ask you this question. How, how can you fit training into your busy, I don't know what the schedule is going to bring um, independent department? Well, the way we usually try to do is, um, you know, usually with your advisors is you, you kind of split it. Um, so if you're, if you're in a fast paced independent shop, uh, we usually try to do in, uh, training on, I, I call it training on the fly. Um, so usually where in a dealership situation, you know, I've got somewhat more time. I can put them in a room. I can split my teams up where in an independent shop, I'm going to be more or less in the battle with them and teaching them along the way, you know, showing them trial by fire, showing them by experience, let them go through it, give them tips, um, or even try assist and let them see how you do it. Because like I said, you've got a higher volume. So, you know, there's not much time to pull them away from that service advisor desk. Yeah, no, I, I love that. I think, you know, so to your point, there isn't, there isn't a one size fits all when it comes to training. You can't just hire somebody and say, train my independent just like you would my factory because they're, they're two different animals. It sounds like. Correct. Extremely two different animals in some cases. Okay. Because in some cases you can also train the factory advisor in the drive as well, but you have the luxury because they have a schedule, right? That you can pull them out for a few hours here and there to get the one-on-one -on -one training that they wouldn't be able to get on the service drive. Absolutely. It's almost, um, and if I can kind of add, it's almost literally, I, I guess I could put it in as, as in acting. I mean, you basically, you let them act out the part, you know, the next customer comes in, you let the other service by take care, you back off into the background, say, Hey, I like how you did this. Can we do this moving forward? Hey, another customer's coming. Hey, action. Let's do it again. Oh, I like that. So it's almost practicing on the customer. Yep. Yep. You are and practicing. That practicing on the stage. I get it. Okay. I like that. Um, so how do you tie the ROI investment into training? Um, do you tie it into your sales gross after the training is over with, or how do you, how do you really know that you got a return on investment? So with return on investment, obviously, you know, like, you know, and most folks know, you know, you have to have a quantifiable factor. Um, with, with the ROI, you know, what we have to do and the way I've done it in the past is you kind of have to go back, see where you're at, measure that, that quantity, and then you go through your training. And then from there, you can basically mathematically try and calculate what your progress is, which would basically incorporate, for example, if you bring in training for maintenance, correct? Mm -hmm. You know, and let's say, you know, you're doing you know, odd numbers of dollars for maintenance, um, you know, in the month of March. Well, in April, you know, obviously we've done, we're doing training and we're doing it on the fly. So we're obviously seeing where our maintenance went from here 
to here. Um, and from there, literally from there to here, this portion right here is your quantifiable objective of what your return on investment was. Uh, and that's, that's how we would calculate it. And I would think you would do the same thing on, on, for your advertising, you know, you right. advertise for sales. So you, you want to see, okay, if I, if I'm doing a air filter special, uh, marketing campaign, how much is that marketing campaign costing me? And how much did I make once that campaign went out? Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it's like I said, you know, getting a quantifiable factor is really the only way you're going to do it and be able to add the two parts together and see whether you, you made a difference or, or we did. Right. No, I, I really like that. I think trying to fit in training in, in, and I visit a lot of dealerships uh, throughout the, the country is you get that same thing is that we're just so busy, but really are, you, you got to really think of it like, I need to do this right? I need to have some training, correct? you know, so the, the excuse or the, the roadblock of we're too busy, you, you, you can't be too busy to train and sharpen your tool uh, because technicians are, are always buying what they're always buying the latest tool so they can get the job done faster. The advisor's tools are training are, are sharpening their words or, or in your, in your own words, being on stage and presenting better or, you know, coming up with a, a way to talk to that customer, to give them that great experience. We talk about this all the time is giving a great experience, right? And that's, that's job number one. If you're not practicing, you're almost asking your service team to put on a pair of cleats and, and go run a play and, and, and play the game without giving them practice time. Correct. And then if they, you know, technically, I guess you could look at it as, even though, you know, if you're, if they're not trained the proper way and they, and they, they're technically practicing every, every customer that comes in, they may be practicing something that's not correct at, at all. And now they've developed a habit. So, you know, and now we've developed a bad habit. Right. And that takes a long time to break that habit because those, right. those became, become ingrained in those advisors. And we've talked about this in this podcast and other episodes is going from good to great, right? How does that advisor understand that because the dealership and, and, and in your position, Corey, you, you give them the tools to be successful. And in some cases it's on the advisor to make sure that they take those tools, embrace them and practice them. Sometimes they have to do it on their own. Correct. Correct. I mean, there is, there is that aspect of, you know, and I think that gets away from a lot of, of folks and then it's not only just in our career, um, you know, especially with, um, and, and I see it, you know, a lot of students that come out, whether it's from trade schools, whether it's from universities, we get into a habit of, well, I did homework in college. I don't have to do homework because I've trained for four years to do this job, or I know my job well enough. Homework never ends. Even, even in your, you know, your business and in, in my position, your position, it doesn't matter. There's still homework to be done. I still have to do homework every day, just as much as anybody else to make sure that my people, I can talk to my people in the morning. Doing homework on the fly never really gets you anywhere. Well, a hundred percent. And I, and I, I, I'll, I agree with you on that is that the way we talk to your, the way you talk to your employees now is different than it was five, 10 years ago. Right. So yes. leadership has changed. The, 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 the employee has changed. So you have to change with it or you're not going to be able to speak to those employees. And we've talked about this too in this podcast is that some employees would rather have a day off instead of bonuses, right? That they, they feel that's more valuable than money, right? right? And that's just the difference of employee. Back in my day, when I was working in the service department, if you tied money to it, I was going to get it, right? Absolutely. But today's employee would rather have an experience or, or a day off than they would money. And so that's leadership has changed. And, and so has even the evolution of the customer. So training and learning, if you're not, if you're not learning, you're not training, um, you, whether you're 20 or 80, that's that old saying you're, you're old. You, 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 if you stop learning, you're old and you've yeah, got to I mean, always continue to keep learning. I mean, it, it's expected. I mean, how are we going to expect you know, you, you always want to expect it all the way down from, you know, any in the chain of uh, employees. 
but how are we going to sit here and look at our technicians and expect them to, hey, you've got to learn because this new vehicle comes out next year and you've got to do this, but you don't expect, you know, the service advisors that are basically working with them to do homework. And then, you know, your the service advisors expect you to do the homework to be able to meet their needs as well. So yeah. homework is a, a very, very important thing. And it's something that I think gets overlooked a lot that really changes the game more than anything um, and, and helps preparation. Yeah. Pre- preparation equals control. Uh, and I think, you know, a lot of dealerships talk about training, but it's not really implemented. So I think you bringing this, you know, to light and I appreciate you taking the time on this podcast to, to kind of talk about, you know, training and how to really fit into a busy service department. What are your three takeaways from this episode in your mind that you can, you know, pass along to a service advisor who's listening or uh, a vendor or, or someone at the leadership of a dealership can take away from this episode? So the one thing that, you know, the number one, I will say, you know, and I know we just spoke about it is homework. I mean, I think homework is the number one key. I mean, you can't throw that away. It's, it's important on all levels. Uh, we're talking about dealership to independent shops. Just because it's different than the dealership doesn't change the fact that you still have to do homework. It, heck, it might actually change the fact that you might have to do more homework. Um, the second thing that I would take away is that no matter how busy that you are, even, and you can imply that into homework, is if you do enough homework, you can find there is always a way to find room for training, whether it's on the job, whether it's away from the job, um, you know, whether it's just, you know, finding some way to get the training in there. And then obviously, you know, once you do that, you need to obviously make sure that the training is proper and it's get, taking you forward because you never want to do training and go backwards. Correct. Um, the third thing that I will say is, you know, there's room for, you know, for anybody who feels that they may not fit one strategy, there's another strategy there. And what I mean by that is, you know, an independent world may not be for everybody, but it may be, they may be for the dealership and vice versa. Uh, we, you know, we believe in, you know, with our, our dealership, our owner believes in it as well is, you know, letting people go just because of not fitting in one place doesn't mean you can't change the Rubik's cube and put them somewhere else and watch them shine like a star. I love that, Corey. Well said. I love the three takeaways. Uh, If you want to deliver a legendary customer experience that keeps the customer coming back to you and encouraging them to invite their friends and family to into your establishment, then you've caught the gold standard of customer service vision. Do you want a more cohesive team that delivers a higher level of customer service that will result in more revenue for your dealership? We provide the tools, knowledge, training to unlock that potential of your dealership. For more information on this topic and others, or to submit a question or to be a guest on the show like Corey, feel free to send me an email at csmith at nationalautocare.com. Corey, that is all the time that we have for today. I want to thank you again for being on this episode. And I'll end this like I do with every episode with the guest. Will you please come back? I will most definitely come back. It has been a pleasure and an honor, Mr. Smith. Uh, And I look forward to our next podcast if possible. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for watching and listening to National Auto Care's Fixed Ops 5 with Corey Smith, powered by Pasha. Be sure to watch and listen to the next episode on the 5th and 20th of every month.